This year marks the 1900th anniversary of the starting of the building of Hadrian's Wall in AD 122 on the instruction of Emperor Hadrian. And it stretches here from Wall's End or Segedunum, which the fort is about 70, 80 metres just over there, along the Tyne Solway Isthmus and it stretches about 73 miles or 80 Roman miles. So Hadrian's Wall formed part of the, the Roman Empire's northern frontier. So the purpose of this particular video is in two parts. As I go along this walk from here to Wylam, which is near Heading on the Wall, I'm going to give you a little bit of history. I'm going to drip feed you some interesting facts that you probably didn't know about this particular walk and this wall, but also what it's like to actually walk this particular stretch of Hadrian's Wall walk which is about 15 to 16 miles and where I'm stood right now this is actually um, a mock-up of what the wall actually looked like at the time but you can see in front of me here this is actual Hadrian's Wall which led from the fort there at Segedunum and headed in a straight line towards Newcastle it joined where the 187 Fossway is now um, parallel, going down parallel Shields Road at Biker over the Ousburn Valley and into Newcastle city centre near where Central Station is now, uh, Westgate Road, up the West Road and so on and so on. Um, the walk we'll be doing, actually, the walk doesn't follow the route of the actual wall, so this is all you're going to see of the wall in this particular section. We follow from the fort here uh, by Swan, Swan Hunter Shipyard and around the curvature of the River Tyne. Behind me here, this is Segedunum Fort, and this is the start of the Hadrian's Wall Walk. And the Romans picked this particular site, and actually, the road that you see here, just going down there, and where I'm stood now, the road actually goes through the middle of the fort, so the town planner that decided to build a road through the middle of a historic Roman fort needs to be shot. But anyway, they picked this particular site on a bit of a plateau, uh, beside, right beside the River Tyne, which is on the bend of the river, so they could see four miles down River Tyne towards South Shields, where they could see any uh, enemies approaching, but also give them a two-mile view down the river in the other direction towards Newcastle. So I'm at the very beginning of the walk now, and I'm really excited. You'll see this little section of wall here. That's not part of the actual Hadrian's Wall. This is a wall that went up to the corner of the old fort there, and this would have stretched down to the river and formed part of a pier into the River Tyne. So anyway, let's get on this walk, follow me, I'm right behind you. So here about 100 to 120 metres from Segedunum along this path is the old Roman paths down this little cut. Let's take a look. So this is the Roman baths and they did have a quite a lavish lifestyle, certainly the officers from the fort I don't think the 400 infantry men and 120 uh, cavalry were allowed to use this. I might be wrong. I think it was just for the particular officers. So that quite a nice lifestyle. It was, it was kind of like um, a modern day sauna set up. They had three warm rooms with pools and one cold room. So this is where we would come and just to uh, wash and bathe and generally just uh, hang out and uh, have a chat. So Hadrian here, he was born in AD 76 and he became the emperor in AD 117. And he ruled the Roman Empire for the next 21 years and is generally regarded as having been a, an effective emperor. And unlike other emperors, Hadrian was a, an avid traveller and he conducted a full tour of the provinces of his empire, causing him to be away from Rome for many years. He was actually born in Spain. So Hadrian spent about three months in Newcastle instructing his men, his three legions of about 18,000 men, on the building of the wall and it took six years to complete although it was said to never actually be finished because we're constantly doing some uh, reconstruction work and tinkering with the design as they went along so we're a couple of miles in on the walk now so when we started Segedunum is actually right behind the old Swan Hunters shipyard which is obviously all gone now it's really sad but this particular path which runs from Walls End to Newcastle I don't know three four miles long it's a, just an ash path behind all the old industrial areas which are now various sorts of um, industrial units I suppose so um, nothing particularly exciting about this part of the path There's a lot of litter I have to say loads of cyclists coming back and forwards it's a hive of activity but uh, thoroughly enjoying it nice day for it actually about 14 15 degrees and uh, overcast perfect for me for walking being out with the dogs behind me on the gated side of the town that's Axon Noble it's a huge Dutch paint company which produces paint for both industrial um, uh, companies and for the general consumer. It's massive, must employ thousands of people across there. 
So we're actually about three miles into the walk now, and this is what you call St. Peter's Marina, and uh, it's where all the posh people live. You can see all the luxury yachts here. Uh, really lovely uh, part of the outskirts of uh, Newcastle Quayside. So I thought I'd just uh, briefly mention, just for some context, kind of the timeline of the, the Roman invasion and occupation of Britain. So I think it was about 55 BC that Julius Caesar made two failed attempts at conquering what was called then Britannia by the Romans. It wasn't until AD 43 that there was a successful inv invasion of uh, Britannia by the Emperor Claudius. AD 76, that's when Emperor Hadrian was born in Italica in Spain. And AD 105, there was a new line of forts were built between the Tyne and Solvia. So a building work had all, uh, already begun there with various forts along that isthmus. And in AD 117, that's when Hadrian becomes the new emperor, succeeding Trajan. And of course, in AD 122, that's when Hadrian uh, instructed his troops to begin building Hadrian's Wall. So we're about a four and a quarter miles in now, we're just about hitting the quayside and where I'm actually stood right now is the mouth of the Ouseburn. Behind me here where you can see all this works going on, there's a controversial planning project going on called the Malmo project where they're looking to build, I think it's a 14 storey tower block directly behind me and that's going to block the views from the Ouseburn which will be a bit of a devastation, I hope it doesn't happen. So anyway we're going to go on at the quayside where the market's happening right now and get a hog roast sandwich. If you'd like to see more videos like this and be notified the moment I release the next one, make sure you hit the subscribe button. So where I am right now is at Elswick where there used to be the Armstrong's works and the shipyards. It used to be a hive of activity during the Industrial Revolution and behind me is the Dunstan Stades. Uh, you might have heard of Dunstan before, if you haven't it's, a, it's in Gated West and Dunstan is actually where Paul Gascoigne is from, Gaza. I've done a whole separate video on the Stades so I won't uh, go into any detail about that. Check it out, I did it about three months ago. I forgot to mention at the Swing Bridge, which is the site of the original Tyne Bridge going back to Roman times. They know that was the original site because when they were building the Spring Swing Bridge, I think it was 1868. If I'm, if I'm wrong, I'll just put the date on the, uh, on the screen there. They found the foundation timbers of the old Roman Bridge dating back to 100, about 120 AD. So we're about six and a half miles in now and uh, of course you won't see any sections of the wall. This isn't the actual path of Vavian's Wall, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video. You'll see a tiny section of the wall, if you go up to Central Station, one of the arches near the old castle, you'll see a tiny section of Hadrian's Wall. Anyway, it's blowing a hooli here, let's crack on. So I'm on the last section of the walk now, I'm about 12 and a half miles in, I think I've got about two miles before I get to Wylam and I'm at the Tyne Riverside Country Park here next to Newburn, beautiful area of land right next to the river, my dogs have loved it. So the actual section of the Heron's Wall walk finishes at Heading on the Wall which is about a mile north from Wylam but I'm heading to Wylam because I need to get the train back. The actual wall is about a mile in that direction which runs either on or parallel to the a69 before it gets to heading on the wall. Most of the wall is actually gone because over time people have used it to they've stripped the wall to make other walls or buildings or to lay the foundations of other roads so most of it's actually gone. For the 80 miles of the Roman wall every mile they had what you call a mile castle and in between each mile castle were two turrets or kind of watch towers and I think all told there was about 20,000 soldiers uh, patrolling the whole length of Hadrian's Wall. There's some dispute as to why Hadrian instructed the building of this wall because 
the barbarians to the north um, were never actually um, a large enough to be a credible military threat to the Romans. It just turned out logistically it was too hard to maintain and retain that land. It was spreading their army too thin. Plus, during the occupation of the Romans, there was a time where they had to pull back to fight battles at the Danube. Rather than trying to hold land in the highlands, they decided to build this frontier wall. It was also a means to keep the men and the soldiers be from becoming mutinous, becoming bored on the wild and cold hillsides of Northumberland. So getting them to build a wall kept them busy. And just north of the wall was, a, along the length of the wall was a ditch, obviously to make it harder for any uh, invaders to uh, cause any particular problems. And uh, just south of the wall, just by a few meters, they had running the length what you call a vallum, which is a, a flat bottom ditch. And it was about six meters wide at the bottom. So all told, the Romans were occupying Britain for about 300 years before they started to pull out as the Roman Empire started to disintegrate a bit by about uh, 450 AD. Anyway, let's finish off the last couple of miles of this walk. And we actually, on the way to Wylam, passed George Stevenson's house where he lived as a child. Let's check it out. So this cottage here, about half a mile from Wylam, is the birthplace of George Stevenson, 1781 to 1848, who later become, uh, would become a civil and mechanical engineer. And he lived here until he was eight with his family. In fact, three families lived here when he was a child, and they occupied one room uh, upstairs, which served as a living room, bedroom, and the kitchen. So they all would have slept probably in the same bed. George Stevenson, of course, is famous for inventing the Stevenson lamp, the safety lamp for miners that were used predominantly by miners in Tyneside and the County Durham area, which gave the term to Geordies, uh, more collectively as a community, referring to uh, miners who used the, uh, the George Geordie safety lamp. Oh, that's it, that's the end of the walk. It's just over 15 miles from Segedun and Walls End to Wylam. I'm just outside the Boathouse pub, right next to the train station. Time for a freezing cold pint of cider. I would highly recommend this walk if you haven't done it before. It's ideal finishing at the train station so I can get the train straight back into Newcastle. The dog's been absolutely fine. Plenty of places to stop and get some coffee, some food, and especially at the Tyne Riverside Country Park in Newburn. It's a fantastic just have a sit down and a bit of a relax. So, anyway, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Until next time, catch you later.